In this video, I'm gonna discuss, challenge, and clarify on one of the biggest SEO mistakes that there is today. I seriously have never seen so many SEOs get tripped up on a single issue like this one. And it completely paralyzes people from making progress with one of the main components of SEO, and that's link building. My name is Matt Diggity, and I run Diggity Marketing, LeadSpring, The Search Initiative, Authority Builders, and The Affiliate Lab. And between all my business sites, affiliate sites, and client sites, I've built over 300,000 backlinks. I also have many leather-bound books, and my apartment smells of rich mahogany. But in all seriousness, I built a ton of backlinks, so I consider myself at least somewhat of an expert when it comes to links. The SEO technique I'm referring to centers around the link building technique known as guest posting. Guest posting is one of the most effective and widespread forms of link building. With guest posting, you identify various sites on the internet that you'd love a link on. Maybe these sites are in your niche, so they're super relevant to you. Or maybe these sites have a ton of backlinks themselves and ton of authorities, so they'll help you rank higher. Either way, you identify the sites and find out their contact details. When you email them, you offer to write free content, i.e a guest post for them that they can post on their site. And in that content, you're gonna include a link to your site. It's a simple concept and still works very well today. But is guest posting actually the problem? No, the problem is how people are finding these sites in the first place. The process is called link prospecting and people are doing it wrong. One of the main techniques that people are using to find guest post opportunities is using Google search operators. Neil Patel explains a bunch of these search operators in this post. If you were to Google, for example, health guest posts, Google is gonna return a bunch of pages on websites that give guidelines on their guest posting criteria. For example, this one comes up. You can simply follow the instructions here to submit a guest post to Referral MD. Brian Dean has an even more extensive list on his guide about guest posting. Now this technique is indeed useful if you're looking to get a start on finding guest post sites, but it does indeed make these sites stick out like a sore thumb to Google. Why does that matter? Google has said multiple times that they want links to happen naturally. In this document on link schemes, Google says the best way to get other other sites to create high quality relevant links to yours is to create unique relevant content that can naturally gain popularity in the internet community. Now despite us knowing that this happens as often as you see a unicorn in your daily life, Google doesn't want us to pay for links, whether that be in the form of money or content as with the guest posts. So should we avoid getting links from sites that basically have signposts saying they're going to accept content from randoms? You wouldn't believe how many times this question gets asked in the Facebook group, like here. Or here in my course, the Affiliate Labs private group where Sergey is asking if people see a difference in results. Or here where Alex is wondering if some words like write for us are okay, but guest posts aren't. Hell, in my link building business, Authority Builders, we simply won't work with anyone who has these words in certain places on their site. So right now I'm gonna explain what the problem with this is, if there's even a problem in the first place. And I'm gonna be giving you some outside the box alternative methods for finding guest post opportunities as well. But before I do that, I'd like to ask if you would give the like button an opportunity. Studies show that YouTube like buttons are 43% less likely to get pressed as a Facebook like button and 37% less likely to get pressed than a Twitter heart. Actually, I don't know if that's true, but it does help my YouTube channel, so help a brother out. So here's the story. At my outreach company, Authority Builders, I run a link audit and manual unnatural links penalty recovery service with my partner, Rick Lomas, who's the best in the business when it comes to this type of thing. A manual penalty happens when you do something so wrong in your link building that an actual human reviews your link profile and assigns a penalty to your site that crashes your ranking. On the bright side, you end up getting notifications like this in Google Search Console, so at least you know what you did wrong. On the bad side, your website is completely destroyed until you get it fixed. Our service helps people recover from these penalties. And over the years, recovering thousands of sites with a 100% success rate, Rick has learned a ton about what it takes to trigger these penalties. So a few years ago, he wrote a post on Diggity Marketing listing out seven supposedly white hat link building practices that can get you popped. Let's go down to this particular section on obvious guest posts. From time to time, when you're doing a penalty reconsideration request, Google actually gives you examples of some of the links they have a problem with. Like this one, where they point out a bad link from a site called Kevin MD. A little bit more of investigation showed that Dr. Kevin used to have a big fat sign that said guest post here right in his nav bar. Now is this a reason that Google doesn't like Kevin MD or could it be something else? Sure, but after doing thousands of penalty recoveries and seeing hundreds of examples, Rick sees that there's an abnormally high occurrence of manual penalties coupled with examples of linking pages with these trigger words somewhere on the page. Trigger words like guest post, write for us, and advertise. But this can get interpreted in many ways. 
like this guy Brian who doesn't want to touch any websites that have words like these anywhere on their site. So I'm here to make some clarifications. First off, it's okay if a website has some page on their website with words like these. Lots of huge websites that I promise you want to link on have a page like this somewhere. Like Freshworks, a DR90 with 100,000 visitors per month which has a Write For Us page. Or VentureBeat, a DR91 with a million visitors per month which accepts guest posts. Or Dribble, a DR93 with 1.4 million visitors per month which has an advertised page. You telling me you don't want one of these links? The problem isn't if a website has one of these pages, it's if these words show up on a page where you're receiving links. Based on observation and correlation with manual penalties, we think that there's a simple algorithm that looks at a backlink profile and when there's too high of a percentage of these words showing up on pages where your links are present, it triggers a manual review. I had dinner with someone from the spam team to get the lowdown on how manual penalties work. What happens is that algorithms run and when a website hits a certain level of quote unquote spam score, the website gets put into a queue for a manual review. Then eventually the manual reviewers will dig in and issue a penalty if they see something fit. And let me tell you, they're quite picky. You don't want to end up on their desk. So this whole thing is about avoiding manual penalty. But what about the day-to-day? -day? Will getting links like these hurt your rankings on a day-to-day -day basis? Is your traffic going to plummet like this? Not likely, but what we do know for sure is it does increase your chances of triggering a manual penalty. But can you do it from time to time? I mean, I'm not talking about making this your full-time strategy to get links with words like guest posts written on the page, but can you do it a little bit? Yes, indeed. I'm sure there's a few of these links in my profile at diggitymarketing.com. But is that really a good thing? Having a big fat right for us in the nav bar isn't necessarily the sign of a great website you would want to link on. I know it happens from time to time, but how many top tier websites websites do you know that accept content from randoms? I think Diggity Marketing has a total of four guest posts, and that's only because the authors are way better than me at the topic at hand. So if you're going to continue link prospecting this way, I would just avoid getting links from pages with these trigger words. The good thing is there's some much better alternatives to link prospecting. Pop quiz. Here's a question for you. Let's say you're trying to rank your website for best protein powder. What's a better link? A link from New York Times or bodybuilding.com. New York Times is one of the biggest sites on the internet with a ton of authority, but bodybuilding.com is more relevant. Come on, which one would you pick? I'm sorry, you're wrong. My bad, this was a trick question. The answer is, the best place to get a link if you want to rank for best protein powder is from the person that's already number one for best protein powder. Why? Because Google has already decided that this webpage is already the most relevant and authoritative piece of content on the topic. The next best link is from the site ranked number two, and so forth. So Google your keywords, and your first attempts at links should be from the people ranking for your keywords. But these are pretty hard to get, right? Sure, you might be able to get a few here and there, but these are your competitors after all, aren't they? Your next source of links should be from the websites that link to these competitors. Why? Because these are the links that got your competitors ranked in the first place. It's so simple, it's stupid. Here's some more ideas. Instead of reaching out to websites in your niche that have guest posts written on their site, start reaching out to everyone in your niche period. Set the number of search results to 100 in your Google search settings. Then use a free Chrome extension like SEO Minion to get a list of all the websites ranking for a given keyword. Then chuck it into an email outreach tool and start outreaching. This is what we do at Authority Builders, except we reach out to every site on the internet with at least a thousand visitors per month. Here's another one, and this one works especially well if you do affiliate SEO. Think about who you work with and who you mention on your sites. So for protein powder, brands like Optimum Nutrition, Garden of Life, and Naked Nutrition. Let them know that you featured them in your list. Let them know that you would consider ranking them higher in your list if they'd be willing to mention the feature on their site. If you want a full breakdown on this strategy, watch the video up here at the top. And make sure to subscribe for more videos just like these.